should look your best today, for Sir Joseph Porter, KCB, will be here this afternoon to claim your promised hand. Ah, oh, Father, your words cut me to the quick. I can esteem, reverence, venerate Sir Joseph, for he is a great and good man. But, oh, I cannot love him. My heart is already given. Given? And to whom? Not to some gilded lordling? No, Father. The object of my love is no lordling. So pity me, for he is but a humble sailor on board your own ship. Impossible! Yes, it is true. Too true. Common sailor? Oh, fine. Oh, but fear not, Father. I have a heart, and therefore I love. But I am your daughter, and therefore I am proud. Though I carry my love with me to the tomb, he shall never, never know it. You are my daughter, after all. Ah, but see, Sir Joseph's barge approaches, manned by twelve trusty oarsmen and accompanied by the admiring crowd of sisters, cousins, and aunts that attend him wherever he goes. Retire, my child, to your cabin, and take this, his photograph with you. It may help to bring you to a more reasonable frame of mind. My own thoughtful father. <laughs> I am the monarch of the sea, the ruler of the Queen's Navy, whose praise Great Britain loudly chants. And we are his sisters and his cousins and his aunts. And we are his sisters and his cousins and his aunts. His sisters and his cousins and his aunts. When an anchor here I ride, my bosom swells with pride, and I snap my fingers at a foeman's taunts. And so do his sisters and his cousins and his aunts. And so do his sisters and his cousins and his aunts. His sisters and his cousins and his aunts. But when the breezes blow, I generally go below and seek the seclusion their cabin grants. And so do his sisters and his cousins and his aunts. And so do his sisters and his cousins and his aunts. And so do his sisters and his cousins and his aunts. His sisters and his cousins, so we reckon, so we reckon, so we When 
I was a lad, I served in Turmer's office, boys were a journey's firm. I cleaned the windows and I swept the floor and I polished up the hand of the big front door. <laughs> I polished up the hand so carefully that now I am the ruler of the queens they be. <laughs> <laughs> As office boy, I made such a mark for the game in the post of a junior clerk. I served the writs with a smile so bland. I copied all the letters in a big round hand. <laughs> I copied all the letters in a hand so free that now I am the ruler of the Queen's Navy. the ruler of the In serving writs, I made such a name that an article clerk I soon became. I won three collars and a brand new suit for the past examination of the Institute. <laughs> that past examination is too much for me that now I am the ruler of the Queen's Navy. <laughs> Of legal knowledge, I acquired such a grip that it took me into the partnership. And that junior partnership I been was the only ship I ever had seen. Was the only ship ever had seen. And that kind of ship so suited me that now I am the ruler of the Queen's Navy. And that kind of ship so suited me that now I am the ruler of the Queen's Navy. I grew so rich that I was sent by a pocket barrow into Parliament. I always voted to my party's fault, I never thought of thinking for myself at all. <laughs> I thought so little they rewarded me by making me the ruler of the Queen's Navy. They thought so little they rewarded me by making me the ruler of the Queen's Navy. Now, landsmen, all, whoever you may be, if you want to rise to the top of the tree, if your soul isn't fettered to an office stool, be careful to be guided by this golden rule. Be careful to be guided by this golden rule. Stay close to your desks and never go to sea. And you all may be the ruler of the Queen's Navy. Be close to your desks. And never go to sleep. And you won't do the way, baby. Oh, you have an excellent crew, Captain Corcoran. It's an excellent crew, Sir Joseph. And um, a British sailor is a splendid fellow, Captain Corcoran. Splendid fellow indeed, Sir Joseph. I hope you treat your crew kindly, Captain Corcoran. Indeed, I hope so, Sir Joseph. Never forget that they are the bulwarks of England's greatness, Captain Corcoran. So I have always considered them, Sir Joseph. No bullying of any sort, no strong language of any kind, eh? Oh, never, Sir Joseph. What, never? In... Well, hardly ever, Sir Joseph. Uh -huh. They are an excellent crew and do their work thoroughly without it. Don't patronize them, sir. Pray don't patronize Certainly them. Certainly not, Sir Joseph. That you are their captain is an accident of birth. I cannot permit these noble fellows to be patronized because an accident of birth has placed you above them and then below you. I am the last person to insult a British sailor, Sir Joseph. You are the last person who did, Captain Corcoran. Desire that splendid seaman to step forward. <laughs> oh. No, 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 the other splendid seaman. Great Braxtra, three paces to the front. March! If what? I beg your pardon, I don't think I understand you. If you please. Oh, yes, of course. If you please. Oh! You are a remarkably fine fellow. Yes, Your Honor. And a first-rate seaman, I'll be bound. There's not a smarter topman in the Navy, Your Honor, though I say it, who shouldn't? Oh, not at all. Proper self-respect, nothing more. Can you dance a hornpipe? No, Your Honor. Oh, that's a pity. All good sailors should dance hornpipes. I'll teach you one this evening after dinner. Now tell me, don't be afraid, how does your captain treat you, eh? A better captain doesn't walk the deck, Your Honor. Ah, oh, that's good. I like to hear you speak well of your commanding officer. I dare say he doesn't deserve it, but still, it does you credit. Now, uh, can you sing? I can hum a little, Your Honor. Oh, then uh, hum this at your leisure. I composed it for use of the Royal Navy. It is designed to uh, give the idea of independence of thought amongst the lower branches of the service and to teach the principle that a British sailor is any man's equal, excepting mine. Now, Captain Corcoran, a word in your cabin on a tender and sentimental subject. Aye, aye, Sir Joseph. Boatswain, in commemoration of this joyous occasion, see that extra grog is served out to the ship's company at seven bells. I beg pardon, if what, Your Honor? If what? I don't think I understand you. If you please, Your what? Honor. <laughs> the gentleman is quite right. If you please. If you please. For I hold that on the seas, the expression, if you please, a particularly gentlemanly tone implants. And so do it, sisters, and his cousins, and his aunts. And so do it, sisters, and his cousins, and his aunts. And so do it, sisters, and his cousins, and his aunts. Thank you. 
Thank you.